What the heck is low country? I don't know, but we're about to find out. What's up, P Nation? We are in Charleston, South Carolina, and we are so excited to take you on a food tour. I can't wait for Southern food. I can't wait for seafood. I can't wait for barbecue. Food tours are my favorite days to film because we get to eat whatever we want. And this is gonna be a great day. Let's go explore. Let's talk about why we're here. Food tour. So North Carolina and South Carolina have this like iconic Carolina barbecue. So the first place we're going today is Rodney Scott's Whole Hog Barbecue. My parents actually told us to go here. They just recently watched an episode on Netflix about it. And so it's really well known. It's gonna be amazing. Let's go. We're seated and there are so many families here. Like it's actually kind of crazy. Normally barbecue places in Texas are just like a lot of young couples willing to spend a lot of money on barbecue, but here it's really a family affair. As like a complete outsider to like the hype around Rodney Scott, because I haven't seen the Netflix special, which has obviously made this place really famous. This looks really, really good. And I love pulled pork. And I love how they have like their own sauce and it comes in this like vacuum sealed little pouch. So we got the basic pork plate and it is eight ounces of whole hog smoked pork plus mac and cheese and coleslaw. Here we go. The first taste I got was from the barbecue sauce, which is really vinegary. I think we're gonna try just the pork this time though, just to see what it tastes like. That is good. It's not very sweet, which I expected it to be. I always thought Carolina barbecue had this like sweet factor. I think I'm now realizing Carolina barbecue has more of like a vinegar flavor to it. But this pork is really tender. It's really, really moist and it has a really great smoky flavor. And really good. Now for my favorite part, the sides. Let's try this mac and cheese first. Mm. Smooth, creamy, mm. peppery. I'm one of the few people in my family that actually likes pepper on everything. Mashed potatoes, coleslaw, mac and cheese, barbecue, it does not matter. And the pepper taste is coming through so strong. This is really good. Alright, now time for what we came here for, which is the coleslaw with the pork and this vinegar. Oh. <clears throat> it's definitely very vin- whoa. It just like went all the way down my esophagus. Okay, it's very different from Texas barbecue sauce. I can see why people are like, whoa, that's super intense. I need to put a little bit less on next time. So I just took a big piece of this bark and it was like an explosion of smoke. I think my perception of what Carolina barbecue was completely wrong. It is so smoky. I guess it's just like, it's a lot more based around pork rather than smoky beef. This is really, really good. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the vinegar barbecue sauce, but the meat itself is delicious. So overall, I think we really liked it. Um, <laughs> Zach, final thoughts? Um, definitely different than Texas. The pork was super moist. I was not expecting that. More moist than brisket is in Texas. And so compared, I can't give Carolina the clear win here because um, I am a Texan, but it was really good. So now we're at the Charleston Crab House, which is just outside of downtown on James Island. And I did a lot of research this past week on what we should get and why and what is special and unique to Charleston. And this place has three of them. So normally we wouldn't go to like a crab shack of sorts, but we're here now and we're about to get some really good food. Are usually 
females that have eggs inside them, also known as roe. So roe is a key ingredient in sea crab soup, and they top it off with sherry. And let me tell you, when our waiter put this bowl of soup down on the table, all I could smell was alcohol. Like it was so strong. This looks really good. I'm very excited. For you guys. Very creamy. Crabby, but not fishy. Very important. And that sherry, it just like adds like a cutting factor to the, the very deep creaminess of the soup itself. This is very Forgot to mention, she crab soup is a very popular dish here in South Carolina. You can probably find it on any menu at any restaurant in the Charleston area. It is very, very popular. And I understand why, because it is really good. So next on our list is the Low Country Boil. Now the Low Country is a region of the South Carolina coast that is pretty much just comprised of the coastal marshlands and all the waterways that make up this area that we've been in for such a long time now. And it has its own culture of food that has been highly influenced by the slave trade from West Africa. So here before us we have a very simple Low Country Boil comprised of shrimp, potatoes, and corn. And I know what you're thinking, that's just a shrimp boil. What makes it so unique? Yes, it is very common to see a shrimp boil like this in many cities on the coast. I think what makes this Low Country Boil interesting is that it also has a different name called Frogmore Stew. And Frogmore is a community on the island of St. Helena in South Carolina. And they coined this term, Frogmore Stew. And they even got it on this like major food magazine in the 80s. So it has cultural significance. It's also this like really just weird piece of history in South Carolina with Frogmore Stew. We have potatoes. And there's even andouille sausage. I forgot to mention that. That also comprises of the traditional low country oil. I'm so used to Old Bay. I don't even know what it tastes like with other seasonings. This is really good. Garlicky, like high-end pepper almost, but it's not spicy. Compared to shrimp oil in Louisiana, this is a lot milder. And the shrimp is cooked perfectly. So now we have Charleston red rice. It's supposed to taste a lot like jollof rice. So I had a friend in college who made jollof rice for me, and it was the best tasting rice I had ever had. It's pretty much just like a, well, jollof rice is like this super spicy tomato-based rice. I think this is more just like tomato, onion flavor. I don't think it's going to be very spicy, but it looks really, really good. I'm very excited for this as well. You can find this on most Charleston restaurant menus. It's very popular and it's going to be delicious. Not spicy at all. Actually kind of sweet. I like it. And I love the food in Charleston, but I really love Charleston just being Charleston. Every building has a plaque on it, everything's so old, everything is so significant, it's just so rare to find in the south. And now we've made it back to our favorite corner of this entire city. It's like a curved street and it's brick, and last time we were here I told Leah to take her shoes off and walk down it because it just is like you're connected to something that is so old, which you never find in America. And the pictures turned out great, so we came back <laughs> to take more. <laughs> Here we go. This is what I'm trying to show you. All day, I have been most excited about cake. This entire food tour was pretty much based around this cake. So we're here at the Peninsula Grill, and you need, this is like a five-star hotel. You need a reservation, you need a jacket, you need to look good to even get in here. We tried to make a reservation, and they didn't have any reservations. So we just popped in and asked if we could get a piece of cake to go. And we succeeded. I am so ready for this piece of cake. It is huge. Coconut cake is the steak cake 
of South Carolina. And I was like, why? I looked it up. There is this restaurant that has this famous 12 layered coconut cake. Martha Stewart had like a big to do about it. It's been posted on like all the food magazines in South Carolina and like on the East Coast. It's just really, really well known. And it looks amazing. Here, take a look. Six vanilla cake layers and then six cream cheese layers with coconut and toasted coconut on the outside. It is a beautiful, towering piece of cake. Okay, I am a connoisseur of cake. I love to make cakes for other people. It was something I did a lot of the time and coconut was a flavor that I could never get over. Mmm, super moist, super dense. You do get that flaky coconut. To keep a cake this dense and moist, it's really hard to do, but they pulled it off, probably because of the thick layers of icing in between. That is really good. The coconut gives it a little grit each bite, so you're not just eating cake that's super airy. You get some texture with each bite. It's really good. I would say it's very coconutty. Mmm. I don't know, it's hard to say if you can really taste the cream cheese. Like it's thick like cream cheese, and you can definitely taste the vanilla bean. I know they put fresh vanilla bean in there because I did a lot of research on this cake. Usually they serve it warm, and so it like, maybe it's like a little meltier, but this is really, really good. I understand why it's like the best cake in Charleston. It's very pretty. I wish we could have been here like to have a reservation and be served this cake, but this is pretty good. talking about how full we were, but I don't know what else we'd be expecting coming on a Charleston food tour. That was really, really good. Seafood isn't something usually Zach and I are like gonna dive into. It's like not our first choice. So it was actually really nice to like switch it up a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, and like really get a taste of what makes Charleston food so unique. Like I'm really happy we had this experience. This was an excellent food tour day. It's one for the books. They're always my favorite Definitely. day. Now for my favorite part, the sides. This moss, it's just like, oh, it's all over my head.